Thank you very much. So my name is Andrew Bradenkamp. Uh, this is my Twitter handle. I um, want to talk today about when words fail us, when words don't do the job that we kind of intuitively and naturally expect them to do. So I, I'm in the business of, of words. Very recently, I had a, a, a revelation, maybe a year or so ago, but I'll talk you a little bit through that story and try to explain a little bit in the spirit of a number of other entrepreneurs looking at what they do, um, looking at how that can, how what you can learn from business can be transferred to the nonprofit world. More people die from a lack of information than lack of medication. Just think about that for a minute. This is um, the Reverend Charles Saley and his wife Doris. They lost their daughter. Um, through diarrhea. They had um, appropriate medication to treat her. She died through a lack of information. I'll come back to this in a minute. More than 70% of almost the 11 million children who die every year die through these six things. And most of them are treatable without any medication, without any sophisticated medication at least, without what we would call medication in the West, but simply with knowing what to do. The treatment for diarrhea, as many of you will, will know, is simply these three things. Boiled water, boiled being a very important part of that treatment, boiled water, salt, and sugar. The Saley family actually had rehydration packs, which simply contained salt and sugar, but they didn't know to boil the water that they gave to their daughter. So I want to tie that challenge back to what I've been doing for the last 25 years, which is delivering content to people or helping large corporations deliver content. So I'm going to talk about any big corporation, any big global corporation, and the way that they are approaching the challenge of getting the right content to the right people at the right time. Content is really, really important to these people. This is increasingly becoming the case. HP will tell you that 90% of their customers will buy their products without ever touching the product. In other words, the only experience they have is of the product is through the words, the phrases, the language, the pictures around that content, around that product. So people have looked at this from, a, from all sorts of different angles. This guy, Stephen Bungay, gave an extra excellent talk about the way in which um, military professionals have learned that the importance of communication. And he's applied that also to a business consulting experience with the Boston, uh, the Boston Consulting Group. And what he, how he encapsulates this is to say that, in fact, the, if we could focus on the quality of the communication rather than the quantity, rather than just churning out stuff, we could focus on the quality of communication, that would give us a fundamental competitive advantage. Delivering the right content at the right time is a fundamental competitive advantage. Think of all the different people in a typical ABC, a large um, global company. Think of all the different people who are creating content. Different people with different qualifications and different agendas, all talking at the customer. They are now starting to think very carefully about what their content is supposed to do. The words of Aretha Franklin, think what you're trying to do with this content. What are you trying to do to me when you give this content to me? Think of the effect you're trying to have. And of course, because everybody in a large corporation has to have a strategy about what they're doing, they invented the term content strategy. It just means a plan. And in this case, it means a plan about what do we want to do, what do we want to say to people, who do we want to say it to? Think of the people who are going to receive that, that content, that, that information. And therefore, how do we need to say it? And 
ultimately, this comes down to the words. And I've had a few people then say to me, okay, words, like, really, I'm trying to build a strategy here. It can't just be words. Words can't do it for me, surely. I've got, I've got a YouTube channel, you know, why do I need words? Tom Johnson, is, he's a technical communicator, produced this screenshot of YouTube with no words on it, right? And he said to try and, you know, try and upload a video or try to like something or share something or try and work out whether any of the search results you've put in here are relevant to you. You can't do anything with this content without the words surrounding it. So what's the long and windy path forward towards doing this stuff properly? I'm going to try and point out three things that I think are critical to making content work harder for you. And these are still insights that, are, that have been honed by these big global corporations who need this to work in order to be competitive. The first thing is people ready. Your content needs to work for the people that you want to read it. What does that mean, people ready? It means you need to empathize. If you're creating content for people, you need to empathize with them. You need to understand what position they're in when they're reading your content, when they're reading your information that you're trying to give them. It needs to resonate with them. They need to think that it's good. And they need to want to engage with you. There is so much content out there that if your content doesn't engage those people, they'll go somewhere else. And these people are not faceless people. Talking about empathizing, they're not, they're not uh, some kind of ideal, ex ideal pe person. They're actually real people. And they not, may not, not be like you. They may be different from you. The people you want to sell to may be in all sorts of different spaces. They may be different to you, depending on what you're selling. They may be people you, have, you don't meet in your everyday life. So how do you go and find them? You need to really get into the minds of those people and develop content that works for them. As I said before, you have an awful lot of content. There's a whole ocean of content out there. You need to help those people who are looking for interesting content. You need to help them find the content that they need. That means your content needs to be search ready. What that means is it needs to survive the whole process of being online. There are more and more people in the world coming online. The rate of growth of the online population in Kenya is currently 14% per quarter of an increase in population, in online population. These people are taking your content. You, but you, you don't even know who the people are who are receiving your content, but you need to reach them. You want to reach them. Kenya has already revolutionized mobile banking. If you talk to people in Silicon Valley, they will tell you all the innovation around mobile banking right now is happening in Kenya. Now, they are right now in the process of revolutionizing the way content gets delivered because they need to, because they don't care about landlines and all those things that we've got used to here. Um, they have a different, the rules of the game is a different and they are incredibly innovative and they're innovating in a direction that we can learn a lot from. People really want the content, and we're not alone in produ producing it. So all of a sudden, communities, our customers, everyone who, um, who is in our ecosystem in terms of content is also creating the content. We have to compete with that content. We also have to be able to listen to what those people are saying. So, it's not just a one-way street where you're creating information, throwing it out there, and people will read it. They won't read it unless it's engaging with them. And if you want to know what they're interested in, you also have to look at the content um, that they're developing. So you have to be able to listen as well as um, speak. Now, in a search environment, most of the content in the world, in the, um, in, in the world that we're in now, as well as in the, the world of um, where, where uh, content is more difficult to get at, all of those places, content 
needs to be findable. If it's not findable, there's no point in creating it. It's just invisible. And finally, the third thing is global ready. Now, you all probably know the famous saying from Willy Brandt, if I'm um, selling to you, I will speak your language. If I'm buying from you, dann müssen Sie Deutsch sprechen. Then you have to speak German. So what's this thing called? If you're selling pumps, what, what is this thing called? If you're selling it in German, you have to find all those things as well to make sure that people know what it is that you're doing. Confucius said, if the names are not correct, then the language won't be in accordance with the truth of things. In other words, you can go along, you, you, you have to keep the things, that, the words that you're using are lined up with the truth that you're trying to communicate. Now, global nowadays really means global, with a capital G and all the other letters actually capital as well. India has 22 languages with more than a million speakers. In the, uh, in the translation business, people talk about the long tail. Um, and you can get the impression this is increasingly irrelevant. These are the languages that are economically extremely interesting for anyone going into the Indian market. These are, these are the languages that people are creating films in, original content in, not translating films, creating films in these languages. The top language, uh, Hindi, doesn't even get a fifth of the market. If you look in Africa, um, everything from Swahili, I've left Arabic off here, but Arabic's a big language too. I've left all the European languages off here. But this is, this is a very long tale of languages. This goes up to the people that, this is up four million speakers here with uh, Northern Sutu um, from Swahili over there on the far side with over 60. So there is a long tale of languages. You talk, to, you talk to really global companies now, especially ones who are making business and fast growth in Africa, they're no longer talking about the typical kind of 35 languages they work with. They're talking about 3,500, 3,500 languages that they need to translate into. So the content challenge is, of course, that you can't read everything. You can't do this by hand. The whole content creation process is going industrial. In other words, it's becoming as disciplined as you know, the product development, as the transformation from Henry Ford um, industrializing the way that cars were made. This is the kind of process that, that content is now going through. And people are developing the content strategy in real detail of uh, governance, how do we work out what we want to do, analytics that looks at the content and is able to give you insights on it, and optimization to be able to improve content. Because when the words fail us, the content fails. Back to Confucius, as he said, when the language doesn't work for you, it's not in accordance with the truth of things, then you won't be successful. Now, why do I say all this? Well, of course, um, the revelation for me was that I thought this was just something that was of interest for big corporations. As I've started to get involved in um, uh, other kinds of activities around delivering content to people, it's become clear that there is another community that really needs our help. Um, what I call the bingos, I didn't coin this phrase, but I love it, the big international NGOs who um, typically drive uh, land cruisers around um, um, and are doing fantastic work. But on a content delivery side, let me come back to this. This is, um, they're not doing a great job and, and they know it. The, it's not because the content isn't there but because it's not in language or in a language that they can understand, that the customer, in this case, um, the people they're trying to help, can understand. As a famous poet said, think like a wise man, but communicate in the language of the people. Another Tedster, Sandra Fisher-Martins, has a program called Claro, 
uh, in Portugal, trying to understand, trying to simplify public information. She says wanting to understand public documents is not is not a whim. It's not an intellectual curiosity that drives people to do this. It's a daily need. It's a right. She tells people to write for your grandmother because she's thinking about her grandmother in, in Portugal. But the same could be uh, said about writing for people in Africa or India or, or wherever. Write for them, not for yourself. 90% of Africans don't even have knowledge of the official language of their own country. Never mind knowledge of some colonial language. And yet 90% of health advisories in Africa are in European languages. This is a big iron curtain separating those people that need content and those people that are trying to get it to them. Nelson Mandela said, if you talk to a man in a language he understands, uh, it will go to his head. If you talk to, it, to him in his language, it will go to his heart. So Translators Without Borders is trying to break down these barriers. It's trying to promote translation, generally, of content into a language nearer to those people who really need it. And training translators in Africa to be able to meet those needs themselves. We're trying to encourage this ideas around people ready, search ready, and global ready content so that people like Charles and Doris don't have to bury their daughters. Thank you very much. <laughs>